Okay, so first time posting in the RSC. This is a patient I did a uh, splenic flexure resection. He has an uh, adenoma, serratus adenoma of the colon, which in the biopsy turned out to have dysplasia. He's a 72-year-old gentleman, and he's had colonoscopies since 2019. In these colonoscopies, the adenoma was attempted to be resected and could not, therefore, uh, under surveillance, when he developed dysplasia, he was sent for surgery. Here you see me uh, dissecting the plane between the gerotas fascia and the mesocolon on the transverse colon. And I work my way uh, up uh, almost uh, as lateral as the tulse fascia and when I feel I am close to the pancreas, I stop my dissection and I turn my attention now to the vascular pedicle. I am uh, mostly a, a hernia surgeon, but uh, I do also uh, colorectal surgery uh, from time to time. Uh, in my city, there aren't many uh, surgeons doing robotic surgery for colon. So I thought this was a very nice case to uh, do robotically. And I want to take this opportunity to give proper thanks to Dr. Popovich, whose uh, great videos and so generous descriptions make the learning process and the execution of uh, these complex procedures a lot better. There you see me taking the pedicle, and now I go uh, uh, taking the mesocolon until I see the body of the pancreas, so I want to stop my dissection over there. Now I start to work uh, laterally. I incise uh, the tulse fascia and uh, work my dissection a little deeper in order to find uh, the sponge that I left uh, only to signal that I have reached uh, the right plane and that I'm not going into the retroperitoneum. And I'm going to follow this lateral dissection all the way up until I uh, meet the spleen. Now, this patient had uh, something that is called the Morgenstern's uh, criminal ligament, which is an attachment from the splenic flexure to the, to the spleen that makes it more likely to have uh, tears and, and bleeding. So I really took my time uh, first dealing with this uh, attachment before I carried on with the takedown of the splenic flexure. Now that I have dealt with that, I, I continue to take down my splenic flexure and I'm going to try and take this dissection as lateral, uh, I mean as, as medial as possible so that later I can uh, do my lesser omentum uh, dissection. Now you see me going into the lesser omentum behind the stomach. And I am preserving the gastroepiploic vessels and I am doing a dissection all the way to the side, uh, wanting to meet with the lateral dissection that I performed earlier in the case. This is not yet confirmed to be a malignancy. N nevertheless, I wanted to give uh, the patient uh, wide margins in terms of the mesocolon. And I also wanted to take the, the epiploic, uh, I mean the, the omentum. to have a, a, a safe uh, oncological resection. There I'm starting to uh, get closer to my dissection. I see another attachment of the, of the omentum to the spleen. I go ahead and take this uh, with the vessel sealer. And finally, I am almost ready to take down my splenic flexure. Once I'm satisfied with uh, the dissection on the top, 
I go and take the mesocolon. You can see there the angle of traits and the body of the pancreas. And I am uh, making sure I stay clear from the body of the pancreas and that I am only taking the transverse mesocolon uh, with my uh, vessel sealer. Making sure I follow this all the way up. And once I take the last few bites, it is very pleasant to see how uh, the splenic flexure drops down. And then you have a clear image of the traits, jejunum, pancreas, gerotus fascia, and the spleen. Uh, at this point, I need to select where I'm going to transect my colon. So I put the ICG. Uh, for this, I want to thank Dr. Francisco Galeana and Dr. Javier Curi, who assisted me during the surgery in terms of telling me what was the, the, good, uh, the, the proper dosage and the time to, to check for, for adequate vascularization. And once I select my margins, uh, I go ahead and, and resect them. Um, unfortunately, we do not have the fancy staplers, uh, robotic staplers here with our robot. This is an X robot. So we had to do those uh, manually. So I'm not going to put you through the, to see uh, just a, a regular stapling uh, on, the, on both of the, the edges of my resection. And I decided to do a vascular load on my anastomosis from the transverse colon to the descending colon. And I closed the common channel with a 3.0 V-lock suture. A single layer, making sure I take several bites and that there is no mucosa and no orifices in between my stitches. I am a little uh, neurotic about uh, having areas where there could be a, a leak due to uh, a mistake in my, in my technical uh, aspects. There you see me switching to canal to imbricate adequately the serosa of the colon. And at this point, I start on the top just so I make sure I have a very good imbrication of the superior angle of my, of my common channel. I start canaling immediately after I, I put the first couple stitches and I watch how this imbricates uh, very nicely. Just uh, the, the very last uh, throw over there. And then I cross to the other side so I can tie a knot and secure my two V-locks together. This is uh, almost the end of the case. The patient did uh, great. I, I actually kept him in the hospital for 48 hours just because I do not do very many of these cases and I wanted to make sure that everything went great. So thanks everybody in the RSC for watching.